Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG Build Guide Edition. Today I am ready to drop on you my new and improved Shatter King, which is of course my Shatter Strike Spell Blade Build Guide. As always, we're going to go through gameplay, skills, passives, gear, and of course, break down the character sheet. Everything is timestamped in the description below if you need to bounce around, as well as the advanced build guide and advanced loot filter. Let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Starting off with some gameplay. Now the skills I'm gonna be using are Shatter Strike, Surge, Enchant Weapon, Flame Ward, and Fire Brand. If you are new to this build or Shatter Strike in general, pretty simple. Once you hit an enemy with Fire Brand three times, that is going to give your Shatter Strike skill a guaranteed crit. Now for normal, just packs of enemies, you don't even need to do that, but obviously for larger enemies, you will use Fire Brand in conjunction with Shatter Strike. And for larger, larger enemies, you'll be using Enchant Weapon with Firebrand with Shatter Strike. Flame Ward is going to be auto-triggered, so anytime you're stunned, it's going to give you two different charges for survivability. And then Surge is your movement. I'll talk about during the skill breakdown why I chose Surge over, or over Teleport, because I was using Teleport for a really long time. Obviously, this is an empowered run. I think stability on this... Um, Island right now is right around 1700, and obviously you can see the modifiers to the right. So you can see right there, I don't know if you saw it, we just used one charge of Flame Ward, okay? You can see it because the little shield comes around. Now, something that is new for this build is we are running it low life. Now, I was streaming this build the other day, and um, we were struggling a little bit with survivability and then someone in the community recommended running it as low life and i just want to say i never thought about that for a shatter strike build and the community member was absolutely right it it feels way better and i can explain later why i really like low life it's because of the new unique and what that new unique does i know i'm not going the right way i'm just Showcasing killing spinners. Get out of that point. We'll go back. We will go back. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I've never been a huge low life guy. But in this instance, it works very well. So, the reason why I decided to come back to this build is one, I've always really liked Shatter Strike. And two, there was a new powerful unique released for this build. So I thought, let's revisit it, see how much we like it, and if it adds a bunch. It took us a while to find it, but we finally got it on stream. I cannot do that. As you can see, it's got a really good fluid motion as you are playing. A good long run. I cannot. he was gonna get off that shot at the end but i had to hit him with six stacks of firebrand with enchant weapon and with shatter strike which is our big damage dealer it hits for about three or four hundred thousand let me show you how to recreate this build so let's start off with the skills for this build and the first skill is enchant weapon right now there's 22 points into enchant weapon because of an affix i have on my gear what you want is 5 into Cell, 2 into Shivering Blade, 5 into Frostband, 1 into Frozen Sparks, 4 into Concentration, 1 into Desperation, and then the last 2 points into Efficacy. Now on here, this is where I put my extra 2 points. So if you only had 20 points, you can only put 2 here. I put the extra 2, so there's 4 for the extra mana cost decrease and the increased elemental damage, because of course we are doing cold damage. Okay, 
Moving over to Surge. Now on, now on here, I was using Teleport because I like the way Teleport functioned better. But in the passive tree, which I will show you in a second, Surge is going to give you a one second less cooldown. So Teleport, you could use it every four seconds. Surge, you could use it every three seconds. And even though you might not, that might not seem like a big deal, it really is. You can use it a lot more and you can run it as cold and it's going to be for building up ward and obviously keeping you alive. So for here, you want five into storm, one into glacial assault, one into cold front. This is going to give you your wave and it's going to help proc your ward. You want five into shield shielding, three into long strider and five into effluence. Now on here, if you feel like you want to travel a longer distance, you could pull two out of this node and put it here. But if you're just looking for the extra ward, which is really what I cared about the most, I left it right here. Totally your call. But if you're really using this mainly for travel and you feel like you just want to go that little extra distance for clear speed, those two points can go right there into long strider. Okay. Moving over to a staple in pretty much any build is Flame Ward. And this has not changed at all from my last two builds. I love the way this skill functions. So what you want to do is three into Dilation, five into Stalwart Defense, five into Barrier. Come up here, three into Desperate Defense, one into uh, Astonish. Or Astonish? Yeah, Astonish. And on here, every time you are stunned, it is going to auto-trigger your Flame Ward. And you want to come over here, two into Fuel of the Flames, and one into Duel. So this is what gives you the extra charge. So again, you get stunned, but don't worry, you still have that backup just in case you get stunned again. Amazing skill. It's basically like a numlock trick, but you're actually using it through the game. So 11th Hour Games likes that. Moving over to Fire Brand. Yes, Fire Brand. This is how you're going to get your guaranteed crit chance for this build. And again, you're going to be building ward and you're going to be getting attack speed and you're going to be getting damage as well. So on here, you want five into pyro, you want two into warding flames, three into fading flame, three into hypo, two into wildfire, one into incineration, one into illuminating fire. Guaranteed critical strike strike with three stacks. This node is literally the most important node of this entire build. Guaranteed crit means all of your gear, all of your idols, all of your passive points, you never have to worry about crit chance, which is huge. And then of course, three over here into full, which is gonna give you attack speed and maximum added attack speed from having your stacks of firebrand. Using it this way, you're gonna be able to have six total stacks. So obviously you gotta hit six times, but six total stacks. Last but not least, the king, Shatter Strike. And the new unique item is gonna give you plus one. That is why I have 21 points. And again, like you can kind of put them where you want. On here, you want five into Shiver, four into Cold Steel, four into Lingering Chill, three into uh, Breath of the Cold, two into Whiteout, and then the last three points, it's personal preference, okay? I put two points up here into Icy Flow to give me some ward and help with mana efficiency, just to make sure I never run out of mana for this build. This build is very mana intensive, okay? Or you can come down here and put the points into Ice Blink. This is going to give you increased attack speed, but it doesn't work if you use a wand or a two-hander, which we are not. We are using dual wield. So you can put three points in here. You can put three points in here, or you could split it as I did. That's your choice, and those are the skills. Moving over to passives, and right now my character is level 88. Level 88. Okay, base class mage. You want eight points in Elementalist, eight points in Arcanist, and five into Mage Flurry. That's it. 21 points. Nothing into the Lonely Sorcerer. Nothing into Rune Master because we don't know what that is yet. And the rest of the 80 points all go into Spell Blade. Now I have modified this a little bit. Really only a bit, very little bit. Six points into Elemental Affinity, eight points into Infused Weapon, five into Frozen Steel, five into Arcane Shielding, five into Essence Duel, five into Mana Reaver, one into Gemini, because we're going to be dual wielding, eight into Prismic Blade, ten into Razor, ten into Mental Fortitude, five into River Blade. 
Now, what is different is I used to have 10 points right here into Blade Weaver. And yes, Blade Weaver will give you increased damage. That being said, I wanted to go more the survivability route. So I pulled out these points, put 10 into Mental Fortitude, which is going to give us Ward per second and Intelligence. And I went into Outrun and Outlast. Now, this is what is new for this build. 100 health, 30% ward retention, but once you put eight points in, you get increased cooldown recovery speed for Surge. That is why Teleport will take four seconds to recharge and Surge will only take three. That's why I switched it out. And then right now I am just leveling up Prodigy, which is gonna give you more ward per second based upon how much intelligence you have, okay? When it comes to Spellblade, your main survivability tool really is Ward. And obviously, since you're running low life, you are going to have a ton of it. You want as much life as you can, as much Ward retention as you can. Okay, Those are the passives. Moving over to everyone's favorite gear, and we are going to start with idols. Now, the main idol... Actually, there's really only two idols you want to find. You want to find one of the... Uh, you want to find two of these increased melee elemental damage and that can roll as high as 70 and plus four melee cold so this one rolled with the perfect four but only 48 and this one rolled with 48 that's interesting the exact same number and a three so obviously you can get better at that but those are the two main idols you want for this build then the other idol you want is two of these increased mana and increased melee cold damage other than that, I just got some resistances in here. I've got some cold damage and some health, more health and more mana. So those are the idols. Those are the main two. Okay, switching over to gear. Normally, my builds really don't have any uniques. They definitely do not have set items in there. You guys know that. Nothing too crazy. I want everyone to be able to play my builds. Now, this one does have quite a bit of unique items that you need. Now, since we are going low life, you do need the good old Inzanguius. This is a very interesting item that is going to take 20% of your current health away and give you ward. On top of that, I kind of consider it Archon mode. So anytime you use a potion, you're going to get 29% increased attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed for four seconds. So anytime you need that extra burst, or maybe if you're in a hard fight, you're going to be using your potions anyways. You're going to be getting those benefits from this item. This one had one legendary potential on it, and I was able to get a tier six void resistance. I think that was transferred over. So that's just what I've been using to take care of one resistance. Okay. The other item you need to run effective low life is last steps of the living boots. Exact same thing as the Exanguis, but on here, it does a little less. So it rolls as high as 11 to 15. These are 13. And again, it's going to take health away and give it back to you as ward. Now, this is what's so great about these boots for this build. And this is what was kind of the main thing that actually sold me on running low life. On here, you will see 387% freeze rate multiplier while at low health. This is a low life build. So on here, and this one rolled uh, 387 and the range is 300 to 400. On top of that, these boots are gonna give you almost a 40% increased movement speed. Now that one affix on these boots, I don't think my face is in the way, Duh, face is in the way. Right here, 734% to freeze rate multiplier, really just because you have these boots. Well, it's gonna give you 400% of it, okay? Now, the newcomer to this build, the item I've been hunting for since it dropped, the bloody nib, okay? Now listen, you are inflicted with bleed when you hit an enemy with Shatter Strike. 2% cold penetration with Shatter Strike per stack of bleed on you. Plus one to Shatter Strike, plus four, that's actually four to eight decks. Increased mana regen, 33 to 50, and critical strike multiplier, 15 to 25. Every single affix on this item will help you. Even the implicit is gonna give you ward per second. Mine didn't roll very good, and it didn't roll with legendary potential, and I've only found one, which is this one. So I'm actually still trying to hunt for a better rolled one, and hopefully one that has some LP on it. Maybe we could put some more crit multiplier. Now, we were testing this on stream because someone's like, oh, you got it up to 40 stacks of bleed. 
So then I was rounding up at enemies and seeing what I can do. I got it up to 81 stacks. Now, to give you some perspective, 81 stacks of bleed on yourself. Remember, this is, this is the negative, it's hurting you. Will give you 162% to cold penetration. Obviously, that is overkill, and obviously it is very hard to stay alive. Now, what does bleed do? Bleed is a damage over time to physical, so you have to make sure that you have your physical resistance all the way up. But there's ways that you can counteract that. Low life helps because it's always like a percentage of your dam uh, percentage of your life, and we are running low life. Okay, leech will help, and we're gonna make sure that you have leech on your gloves. On top of that, since it's a dot and it's damage over time, I highly, highly, highly recommend you have a good rolled Oracle Amulet because the implicit on this can roll as high as 20% less damage taken over time. Okay? Leech, low life, Oracle Amulet to counteract the bleed from the nib, but then give you huge cold penetration. Also, if you can get a good rolled nib, it's really gonna help you with mana regen on this build because it's normally the one, number one complaint. I keep, can't keep Shatter Strike up. Well, now your relic that's gonna give you all these goodies can also roll as high as 50% mana regen. Okay, let's go through it. Helmet, this is my plus two to enchant weapon. Physical resistance, intelligence, health. Amulet, cold penetration, cold damage, and resistances. You saw the armor. I am obviously using two Shard of the Shattered Lances. These are very, very easy to find. You can use them at level 68. And literally, once you can equip these items at level 68, you can run in power. Just so you know. You do so much damage because you can roll with two of these. Melee, cold. They're, they're, they're too good. for the, They're perfect for this build. And you can run two of them. Ring, intelligence, mana regen, life, physical. Belt, cold, mana regen, life, ring, cold, mana regen, endurance, and necrotic resistance. You saw the nib, you saw the boots. Now for the gloves, you want attack speed and you want melee damage leached as health. Melee damage leached as health, okay? Gotta have some leech. On top of that, for my blessings, it is also good if you can get Leech Rate. This is an old one, because I haven't been able to find a good one, but Leech Rate also helps as well on the Black Sun uh, Island for your blessing. That is, I think that's everything, the gear. Now let's break down the character sheet, and again, I am level 88. So I was able to get, I think, five levels, and then I felt good about this build. Dexterity, we have 13 points. Intelligence, we have 33. Man, oh man, does it hurt not being able to get life from your armor with that vitality and from your boots. Right now, vitality is only one. No good. Resistances are solid. The only one not maxed is cold, so we need to do a little work there, and I'm going to do that through my gloves. Movement speed, 39%. I will take that. Ward retention, 197. You saw the freeze rate multiplier at 734. Now you can actually see that number. We move over to the damage numbers. Your actual critical strike chance is irrelevant because you're gonna get a guaranteed crit from Fire Brand. So critical strike multiplier is really what you want. This is 220%. And then our cold damage is at 276. Defenses, our main survivability is Ward. Our main survivability is Ward. That doesn't mean that you can do other things. Again, I need to continue to work on gear for this character. Critical Strike Avoidance should be 100. Right now we're at 41. Endurance should be at 60. We're at 34 and Endurance Threshold's doing okay at almost 400. That is the character breakdown. Now let's talk about a section that I want to add to all my build guides and that is leveling. People always say, Aaron, how do I level this character? It's great that it can do end game, but how do I actually do it? Now you might like this answer, you might dislike it, but this is the honest truth for me when it comes to mage, okay? This character, I didn't actually turn it into a spell blade, I think until level 50 or 60. When it comes to the mage class, okay, I level all of them the exact same way. In Last Epoch, it is designed for you to learn lore. 
to learn the game. Really, the campaign is the tutorial of the game. And if you played it enough, it is very, very simple. Most of us just skip it through the dungeon, okay? But if you're a new player, if you're a new class, if you want to know the best way to level this character to end game, it literally could not be more simple. You want to take Elemental Nova, and honestly, it's your choice. Like, you could take it Fire, Lightning, or Cold. I recommend taking the Lightning route because it does the most damage, okay? So you take Elemental Nova and you take the Lightning route, okay? This way. And then you go teleport and you take this tree. Every single time you teleport, you are going to use Elemental Nova three times. So you'll be able to manually cast an Elemental Nova. And when you teleport, you'll be able to cast Elemental Nova. On top of that, you will use standard Lightning Blast. Again, you'll use Lightning Elemental Nova, Lightning Lightning Blast, and teleport will all work in perfect synergy. And then from a survivability standpoint, you can take Flame Ward. And you could literally put it the exact same configuration that I have it for this build. You could just keep leveling it that way because it's going to give you survivability. It's not going to do any damage because that is not how we design it. Teleport, Elemental Nova, Lightning Blast, Flame Ward will take you all the way through end game. And I'm not kidding. Like, you just go, you could probably get it to level 60. No problem just with those skills and not even touching Spellblade or Sorcerer. All right. That is my recommendation. And then when you're talking about gearing it, just take anything that gives to adaptive spell damage. So whether that's a wand or a staff, you can use Last Epoch tools and just continue to level your weapon as you progress. That is how I would level it. All right, everyone, that's the build guide. Shatter King, I think it's version three, is now in the books for 085. What does everybody think? Do you like these little tweaks that I've made? Are you considering changing yours? Let me know in the comment section below. If you didn't hear, I've officially started a Patreon. Thank you to the first 36 people that signed up. All the likes, shares, comments, all the feedback, everything helps push the channel forward. But if you want to take it one step further and become an action RPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content, we just put up podcast number 10. Check out the first link in the description. It really helps. It really, really helps. I would really appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance to join the official action RPG Discord, please do so. We're approaching 1,500 members, great conversations every day. The idea is to create a gaming community that could jump from game to game together, so you never start the server alone, and we are ramping up for Last Epoch multiplayer. So much stuff coming in the future. The Discord is also linked in the description with over 20 viable build guides for 085, so check it all out. Lots of information. All right, everybody, that's the video. Hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something. Erin, out.